Lots of things I want to talk about, but I want to explore your feelings. There's music, there's theater, there's opera, there's theater, there's stories through song, there's stories through theater narrative, there's stories through opera narrative. And you went from theater, always with a musical background, and you went into opera. Didn't opera come first and plays came second in history? Didn't we have song story first? Well, if you yes, there were singing in Greek tragedies, <coughs> in the chorus, choral work, but the invention of a of a spoken play. Didn't we have Italian sung drama before that? Well, the first the first opera is late not the 16th century. What was before that in terms of theater? Rafe Royster Doister. Well, it's a play. <laughs> Did it have music? Probably. I think there's very little theater that didn't have music until it became unaffordable. <laughs> um, but opera. So in the European tradition, then the 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 medieval mystery plays done in the churches had music oh, because they were acted in the church I about the story that's of that's right you know, whatever they are the miracles or the mysteries whatever they were and then absolutely. there's the music yeah absolutely I mean music's fundamental to to our lives period. I don't care if it's opera or uh, Gregorian chant or folk songs. Why? Because we all sing. Why? I think because we have to find a way of sharing what's inside of us with our fellow men and women. And we can That's do a glib it answer. I don't know words, the answer. Or we can do it with That's right. song. But isn't, aren't words a kind of music? I mean, doesn't when you read a Shakespeare sonnet or give a uh, you know Queen Mab, isn't that a song? Isn't that a doesn't Shakespeare have his own music? So yes, you, and so you you, you have uh, Tennessee Williams has his own music. But is the dialogue on CSI Miami music? No, I think it's junk. I think it's junk too. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's glib and 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 facile. And There's no music in it. Only the background music that tells you what to think. So they, these kind of narratives have stripped the music from language, mm -hmm. whereas you're saying there's music in language, yeah. there's music in Shakespeare, there's music in poetry, there's music in Judith Thompson's work, there's music yeah. in... Yeah, let me, let me turn it around. You go to the theater a lot, I assume, yeah. um, see your colleagues, see the new plays. How many of them have you come out saying that was a wonderful script? That was a wonderful play, and the music of it was terrific. Not the music, the background, the music of the text. Any great production, or any production that inhabits me, yeah. and I can never forget, there is an unspoken music to it. That's right. I mean, this summer, uh, we go to Nova Scotia every summer, um, and we went to the Chester Playhouse and saw a MacIver play. And I'd never seen a MacIver work, and it was terrific. And I walked out saying, this is a wonderful beat. And the music of it was wonderful, the way he uses language and the way he repeated words. So I think music is just fundamental. You're talking about the sounds of music? Because in a way, music is the most abstract of the arts. Well, music is made of many things. Huh? Melody, rhythm, um, tempo. So there's lots of things that make up music, and you can have music just, that's music. I mean, don't think of music as a violin concerto. Think of music as sound, which is a lesson Harry Summers taught me when we did Louis Riel. Um, he talked about the sound of the piece, and I'd never heard music spoken of as sound, but of course it is sound. And, and so a whole, you get a whole riel, and there's a basic sound to it that the music creates that we overwhelms us, and that's what we leave the theater with. So this is a sound that's free of language, mm -hmm. language which is uh, packaged meaning in alphabets and sounds. Hello, Leon, your shoelaces are long is information. Right. Now, and music is a communication without that information, without yeah. that intellectual or rational information. Yeah. It is a communication of yeah. 
emotion, spirit, well, soul? Well, I, I, you know, emotion and feelings are words that I try and avoid because they're so generalized. I mean, what is a feel? How do you feel, Robert? I feel good. Oh, excellent. What does that say to me? It says nothing, or, you know. So it's, it's I don't think, and, I, and communication, I also don't like that word because we're trying to communicate all the time. You get on a streetcar and you look at the person next to you and you nod. You're making a communication. So it's not about communication. It's about exchanging passions. It's about exchanging a heartbeat. Um, it's about acknowledging the vulnerability and sensitivity of human beings. And that's what music can do. It can just make you, it can make you suddenly aware of yourself and who you are. How? I, don't, I have no answer. I have no answer. You know? That's why, it's, for me, it's the most mysterious. It is mysterious. The most abstract. Listen, I work in it all the time, and I don't understand the mystery of it. You know, I, when you hear a good singer and, and those notes come out, is it not the most breathtaking thing in the world when you hear a gorgeous line? It's breathtakingly beautiful. I don't know why that is. But somehow it reaches into your soul and makes you respond. We know that as a species we had sound before we had words. We went uh uh mm, e, ah before we had p. T, I think I think we parakeet. I think we had drawing before we did that. Go to the caves and go to in, down in those caves and and what is it? Let's go yeah. and and you have the cave drawings. It's the first theater. It's all there. The, the the buffalo and the hunt, the stories are all on the wall. With without the words. The artists and the, the hands stuff. of the artist are on the wall. That's theater. That's that's touching us. And then you think about how they did that with no electric light. And this marks on the ceiling where they took the they hit their torches against the ceiling that's and right. knocked the charcoal off so that we have more flame. That's right. And the marks are still on the ceiling. That's right. And the and charcoal they're there. pits are so, still on the floor. So is that twenty eight thousand years ago? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, it must be. I mean I I don't know dates. Uh, but that's the first theater. That's the first time human beings are saying to each other, look. And they're they're um, displaying their prowess. I did this in the hunt. I capture that. So look at me. And, and, and go take it from there. Then take it to Sophocles. So I mean, it's all, it's all mysteria. I don't have answers. All I know is that if it's beautiful, it'll make you think. And how do you, not that I want an intellectual de definition. I'm not asking for that. How do you? define beautiful. You say, if it's beautiful, it will make me think. Beautiful not in a glib sense of Hollywood beautiful, not in a sense of dec decoration that's beautiful. Beautiful in the sense that it is emerging from the heart of the person making the sound. You can hear a singer, you can hear two singers do the same thing. One is, is gorgeous sound, it's beautiful. The other one is not quite as gorgeous, but it's from here. Which do you choose? You always choose the one with heart. Oh. Let me ask the really stupid question. How can you tell the difference? You can. Just listen. Just listen. And you can. But you have to listen. And, and most of us, me included, don't always listen. It is, was important for us to involve young people, to train them, to encourage them to follow their dream, to follow, you know, their gift.